Welcome everyone, I am Gilles Fettenbach from Ghent University and today I will discuss about uh, the characterization of PZT in films through second harmonic generation for efficient on-chip second order nonlinear devices uh, and these uh, results have recently been published in uh, advanced optical materials. Well, silicon photonics has enabled smaller and power efficient uh, integrated circuits that are mass manufacturable at very low cost uh, and this by leveraging existing CMOS infrastructure. Uh, different uh, active and passive components have already been demonstrated on the platform and these integrated circuits today found use in different uh, sectors like uh, data centers, like sensors, uh, the health sector and different other se uh, sectors. Well, the functionality of these uh, integrated circuits can be greatly enhanced by exploiting second order nonlinearity uh, for fast modulators, for example, for quantum sources, for on-chip uh, parametric oscillators, frequency converters, and so on. But unfortunately, silicon, due to its uh, central symmetric crystal structure, has a vanishing chi 2 and therefore lacks uh, second order nonlinearity. Uh, different routes to mitigate this lack have been pursued both in silicon or different platforms. Uh, for example, in silicon, by using a strip of silicon nitride, uh, strain fields have been induced in silicon, thereby breaking the symmetry in silicon waveguides, uh, and these, uh, by so doing, inducing a second order nonlinearity in the silicon waveguides. Uh, there have also been demonstration of uh, second harmonic. Uh, conversions in doped silicon waveguides uh, by using electric field induced second harmonic, uh, this by taking advantage of the DC coupled K3 effect in silicon. On top of this, there, has, there have also been uh, uh, the heterogeneous integration of uh, optical material with very large uh, second order nonlinearities on silicon. And we have seen demonstration of very fast modulators or second harmonic generation on, on silicon with the integration of lithium now bait of PTU, of organic polymers, organic crystals uh, with a very large second order nonlinearity. Uh, and beside that, a dedicated platform like aluminum gallium arsenide or lithium now bait have also been pursued uh, and we have seen the demonstration of uh, very uh, efficient second harmonic generation in these platforms. Well, among the different uh, materials that have been heterogeneously integrated on silicon, uh, PZT tin films have um, enabled efficient and fast uh, electro-optic modulators with uh, operation up to 30 gigahertz uh, both on silicon and silicon nitride and this by exploiting the large pockets effect in PZT tin films. Uh, 40 gigabits per second on return to zero operation with uh, low loss hybrid waveguides have been demonstrated. And these results have basically triggered the characterization of PZT tin films through second harmonic generation experiments for on chip second order nonlinearity. And in this talk, I will basically elaborate or expound more on the results from these experiments. Our PZT tin films are grown via a modified soldier process by using a tin a lantern lamp based intermediate layer, which actually allows for the direct integration of our PZT tin films on basically any substrate, as compared to the traditionally used uh, platinum based intermediate layer. The samples that we use in our experiments are on glass substrate. So, starting from a glass substrate, we have a thin layer of ITO directly coated on the glass substrate. And this ITO layer acts as a transparent bottom electrode. On top of that, uh, we grow a 10 nanometer thin lantern lime base intermediate layer, which acts as a diffusion barrier and as a seed layer for our PZT growth. This is uh, one of the main aspects of uh, our technology because this is what enables us to grow our PZT thin films basically on any substrate. So on top of the lantern on base uh, intermediate layer, we then spin coat uh, this, uh, the PZT and anneal it uh, uh, between 500 and 600 degrees Celsius. And this step is done repeatedly until the required thickness for the PZT is reached. We subsequently evaporate uh, ITU on the top of the PZT tin film, and this is used as uh, the top electrodes. The structural characterization of our uh, PZT tin films reveals that um, the, the, the PZT is polycrystalline, but the photoelectric domains have a preferential orientation along the 100 axis plane uh, with the strong peak 
that can be seen on the XRD. By having a closer look at the stem uh, uh, images, we basically see that the strong orientation of uh, the PZT18 films uh, domains is dictated by the strong alignment or strong orientation of the line to nine oxycarbonate intermediate layer in between, which is also the seed layer for the PZT. Uh, the second thing that we see is that the uh, PZT actually heterogeneously crystallizes from the lanternite intermediate layer with the formation of columnar perovskite phase and some secondary phases. Um, we also see the, the, the lines uh, which marks uh, the separation between the different PZT layers uh, that has been processed. The samples are characterized through second harmonic generation experiments uh, in the lab uh, using a setup that we, we, we developed in the lab. Uh, we use a, a femtosecond laser emitting infrared light at 15, 15 nanometers with a repetition weight of 20 megahertz as the light source. Uh, polarization beam splitter cube uh, actually maintains uh, a, a linear polarization throughout the measurements. We have a half wave plate that is used to rotate the input polarization. Uh, the half wave plate and the sample uh, rotation stage are basically controlled by a motor, and this allows for polarization and angle dependent measurements. A long pass and short pass filters are used to block the second harmonic light before the sample and the fundamental light after the sample during the measurements. We use a single photon counter source as uh, our photo detector. The setup is uh, calibrated uh, using a BBO crystal, uh, and then the measurement data are fitted uh, to uh, a model that we uh, implemented on MATLAB to calculate uh, the nonlinear second order susceptibility tensor elements. From the previous uh, characterization, we saw that the PZT tin forms have a C axis oriented out of plane, so the, the phonolytic domains are oriented. Uh, with the preferential orientation out of plane. Uh, we have uh, an uh, in-plane isotropy, random isotropy in-plane. And this symmetry basically drastically reduces the number of independent uh, tensor elements in the second order susceptibility tensor to three independent elements. So by determining these three elements, we can fully characterize our PZT in films. For the experiments, the sample is kept at the fixed angle with respect to the incident light. In this case, uh, we keep the sample at 70 degrees so that the C axis is in line with the input polarization. So the polarization really is matching almost with this direction of uh, uh, the, the, the C axis. And throughout the measurements, we record the S and P polarization, uh, second harmonic polarization. So the S polarization uh, being the polarization that is perpendicular to the optical table and the P polarization, the polarization that is parallel to the optical table. So both the S and the P polarized, uh, second harmonic polarized light are recorded Why? We vary the input polarization of the, 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 the polarization of the incident beam by rotating uh, the half wave plate. In the first set of experiments, uh, we incident P polarized light, so polarization that is parallel to the optical table, and we record P polarized second harmonic light while we apply a DC field across our sample. So uh, the DC field is applied across uh, by using the ITO uh, layers. So uh, this is the signal, this is ground, and then we apply signal uh, DC field across. So the E field is concentrated in this region and the incident light is actually incident across the, the, the ITO. So the light passes through the ITO into the PZT and this region where we have the electric field. Uh, in figure A, we start off from zero volt and we apply negative voltages up to minus 15, going back to plus 15 and back again. While in figure B, we start uh, from zero volt and we kick off towards positive voltages. Well, the first observation that we can make from both graphs is that we have a non-zero response after growth. So directly after growth, without any voltage, we uh, have a second harmonic response. This confirms that we have symmetry breaking during uh, our PCT growth. And the uh, chi 2 that we calculate for that from, from measurements was around 6 picometer per volt, which is already uh, a very interesting number. The second observation that we do is that we have a slight asymmetry 
uh, in both graphs because the, the value, the second harmonic value that we have at minus 15 is higher than what we have at plus 15. And this indicates that we have a preferential alignment of our ferrologic domains in the direction of growth. So in the direction of growth here, what I mean is if I apply a negative voltage with this ITO layer being the signal, then the electric field is actually pointing upwards in the direction of PZT growth. And we, we, we have that uh, negative voltages actually have a higher response. So the ferroelectric domains are aligned in that direction. In other words, the polarization density, so the P is in the direction of growth, it's upward or the atom, which actually determines the crystal, uh, the symmetry breaking in the PZT, it's uh, standing above the, the equilibrium position. And this is further confirmed uh, by having a closer look at the, the graph because uh, starting from zero, a negative voltage actually enhances the second harmonic response of our PZT tin film, while a positive voltage from zero actually reduces first uh, the second harmonic response. The other observation is uh, the hysteresis curve that we can see, and this confirms the ferroelectric nature of our PZT tin films. Because uh, hysteresis is actually a signature of uh, the ferroelectric nature of our PZT tin films, and also the, the switching of the domains with a DC field, which is very important because this reflects this is an indication of the reversibility of the Chi2 in our PZT tin films. By applying a DC field, we can basically reverse the domains and thereby reverse uh, the Chi2 uh, in our PZT tin films. This is very interesting. Uh, for efficient second harmonic conversion because quasi-phase matching can then be achieved uh, by electric uh, by electro design and a very simple polling process uh, in our case with our PZT tin film technology. There are different effects that are actually at play in our field effect uh, measurements uh, and we try to shed more light on actually what is the mm, dominant affected player. So the intensity, uh, the second harmonic intensity in the ferroelectric material in the presence of an electric field is actually a sum of three different terms. We have the common or the generic chi 2 uh, term. We have the DC couple chi 3 effect. So the e this is an in instantaneous effect. And we have a cross term basically between the two. Uh, in the, 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 the presence of uh, an electric field in the case of a dominant DC couple chi 3 effect, the second harmonic response basically scales quadratically with the applied electric field. And what I'm showing here in the, in the rising and the, 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 the falling part of this hysteresis curve is basically a quadratic projection of the second harmonic response with an electric field in both parts of the curve. And what we see is a deviation from the quadratic response at higher field, both in the rising and the falling part of our hysteresis curve. This indicates that the DC couple chi 3 effect is not the dominant part of our field dependent measurement, but rather the common chi 2 term, uh, which is linked to domains flipping and reorienting in our PCT tin films with the DC field uh, across the, the PCT tin film. So basically with the DC field across the, 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 the tin film, the domains uh, align uh, with respect to the field or the align, and this actually enhances or reduces the second harmonic response uh, from our PCT tin films. And this is what is responsible then for the increase uh, in the second harmonic response with an applied electric field. By applying a DC field over the sample for 15 minutes and then releasing the DC bias and monitoring the second harmonic response over a very long time, over hours, we were able to uh, 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 show that the second harmonic response from our PZT tin films is actually stable over a very long time after polling. And by comparing the response uh, on the three different biasing conditions, uh, we were actually able to see uh, a tremendous increase in the Chi2 response. So what I show here is basically the measurement and the fitted curves for uh, three different biasing conditions after polling. So this is without any bias. This is the green is with minus 15 bias and the yellow is with minus 20 volt bias. We see that starting from without any bias after polling, we have 
a Ki2 value of 60 picometer per volt, and there is a tremendous increase up to 128 picometer per volt with a minus 20 volt uh, bias across the PZT tin film. So this table basically uh, 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 um, summarizes the Ki2 values that we obtain in our measurements. And in conclusion, we were able to demonstrate uh, electric feed induced tuning or enhancement of Ki2 in our PZT tin films with a very large Ki2 of 128 picometer per volt uh, that was measured. We demonstrated polling at room temperature and domain switching on our PZT tin films. This domain switching on the large Ki2 in our PZT uh, tin films opens an avenue for highly efficient on-chip nonlinearity devices with quasi-phase matching and on-demand uh, engineering possibilities. Thank you.